my friends, and welcome back to another episode of MTD North America. I have the great privilege today to be with my friend Udo, and we are here in Kentucky, more specifically, at Stereg. And we're going to learn a little bit more about who Stereg is, where they come from, and the expansion that's happening right now in the U.S. So, Udo, thank you so much for being a part of MTD. Tony, thanks a lot for being here, even on that unbelievable rainy day. Well, we got to so, have the rain to have the flowers, from what I hear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot of people say we need some rain. Well, Starag, from what I understand, is really the best kept secret. Because you guys are, I mean, the quality of your machines is arguably second to none. The, what, the capability of what they're able to do and the industries that they get into are really unique and high precision industries. Correct. But let's start at the beginning. Back in the 1800s was around the time you guys first started. Let's learn a little bit about that, that timeline and that history about who Starg is and who, the, who you guys are today. Yeah, Tony, you are absolutely correct. And we are very proud about our history. So being a little bit precise, um, we started actually out in 1862. That was really a long, long time ago. A lot of our brands really got founded between 1862 and 1914. So we have a long history. Sterec is a global technology supplier in manufacturing high precision ma machine tools. Our machine tools, Tony, are used for milling, drilling, turning, and boring. And coming a little bit back to our history, I mean, today, we're looking at this wonderful machine here, built in 1928, and actually in production, believe it or not, till 2020. Wow. Yeah, we not always like it, because then the customer are not buying new machines, but that tells a little bit about the quality of our machines. Almost 100 years this thing was in production, and to your point, which I think there's a little bit of jest behind it as well, guys, but how can we make any money if the product is that good and can last 100 <laughs> years, right? But right. You, but you mentioned turning and milling and a bunch of other applications. What industries do you guys provide, you know, I would say the majority of your service to? Because obviously anyone can get involved with the Starry machines. Absolutely. But what industries do you, do you see where you give the most benefit with your machines? So if we look into the industry, we really are very strong in the aerospace industry, transportation and industrial, luxury goods and medical, and energy. So being a global player, you also can say we are, a, we are playing in all kind of industry. The amazing is we are building machines which making parts which will fit into your watch. And we're making machines which are as large as they are not even will fit in this whole building here. Wow. Yeah. If we go approximately 20 minutes from here, we are installing right now one of the largest machine ever installed in North America. So Udo, Starag is a Swiss-based company, is that correct? That is absolutely correct. So we are headquartered in Switzerland. We have six different facilities where we build our machines and they are throughout Europe. We have facilities in Germany, we have facilities in Switzerland, and we have facilities in France. Here in the United States, we are headquartered here in wonderful Hebron, Kentucky. I, well, I like that you have spread out and you guys continue to grow. Now, I know you've started in the 1800s and then you said most of the technology developed into the early 1900s, but you guys continue to expand and partner with people and, and grow yes. within the industry itself. And everyone knows the quality of the Swiss name anyway. Yeah. No, you are absolutely correct. Of course, from 1862 till 2021, there is a lot of milestones where we walk through. Uh, Really, the last one was a big step for Sterak. We opened a new tech center over in China. That was in 2019. But there is a lot of steps in between. And we claim ourselves a global company. That means also we need a global footprint. So you can find Sterak sales and service offices really around the world. And when did you guys make the move to come to the US? Uh, we came to the U US actually with American SIP at that time um, in 1955. Wow, so you've been here quite a long time. Yes, and here in this building, Tony, we are approximately 20 years right now. We are actually the first tenant here, but um, yeah, we are pretty stable and we are not really jumping a lot around. And in this facility, um, I'm grateful enough to be here and get my own tours. I hope you guys join uh, for a tour every now and again. Kentucky's a beautiful place. But here you have a tech center, you have a smaller warehouse, you have a warehouse down the street, you have offices. Uh, you guys actually support, I believe, 
the outside production to prove out a product for a customer right here in your tech center in this facility. Absolutely. Uh, Tony, we actually call it a lab. Ah, okay. Yeah, that's a little bit our term. Um, but why we call it a lab? Actually, if, the if, if a customer comes to us and he's looking for a solution, then we look into it, we go into our lab, and we create the process um, for this particular part. So we basically, not only a machine tool builder, we are actually a solution provider. It is very unlikely that a customer comes to Sterak and just buy a single machine, as, as we say, a little bit a naked machine. What it means is really without a solution behind it. So we do the programming, if requested, full turnkey. We add automation to it, et cetera, et cetera. So you guys, with this lab, and thank you for correcting me, a lot of people call it a technical center, but I think yeah. it's important that we convey the right message, and, and this is a lab. Yeah. That's important to convey. So you guys really, I would say, from what I've seen, create relationships and partnerships with these companies that you work with because you want to yes. work with them for the long term. This yep. isn't a, a quick sell, I gotta sell five of these in my month or I'm nope. gonna get fired kind of thing. It's very important for you to create a long term relationship with your partners and clients. And that's a lot of what this lab does as well is, hey guys, we want you to be successful. So we're gonna help you create it here and then we're gonna prove it out and then you guys will have that success in your facility. Absolutely, Tony. But even after the machine is delivered or the system or the solution is delivered, we still working with the customer in a very close partnership. A lot of our customers, we have either monthly or even weekly technical calls with them after the equipment is installed. And sometimes even with some customers, we divide it by, let us say, application related calls or pure technical calls. And we get a lot of feedback from the customers and sometimes even customers ask question, hey, can you engineer this or that on top of it, what we already have? And then mostly in our factories, we do that. But for us, it's very, very important, the long-term partnership with our customers. You mentioned a little bit uh, our part center, I think mm -hmm. two seconds ago. Just last year, we made a big move with our part center. So our part center in the past was down in Dallas, but it was really a little bit too far from here. And we were also outgrowing of that part center. And then we decided to move everything over here to Ohio, a little bit over the river, a couple minutes from here to better control it, but also to get more uh, parts into our warehouse. That all belongs to our partnership with the customers, be closer to the customers and make sure they can run, run the equipment 24 hours, seven days a week. So Udo, when you talk about moving your inventory from Dallas up to Kentucky, obviously we're saving the lead times like we discussed yes. a little bit, but it's quite a large inventory, something that would be considered significant coming from Europe, right? Absolutely, Tony. And um, that was one reason that, that we moved because we really would like to expand the amount of parts we keep in our warehouse. I can really say right now we have 1.3 million in inventory and we are growing on a monthly base. Um, we have spindles here. We have an exchange program in place, so customer can send us their broken spindle. We have exchange spindles in our warehouse. We can ship it within 24 hours, absolutely no problem. Um, and we have roughly room in the warehouse to grow up to approximately 2 to 2.3 million inventory. I think that's really a significant number. I would absolutely agree with you, Udo. When you're talking about being able to support someone across the pond from Europe, that is extremely important. Not, yes. not just what you have over a million dollars in inventory, but the amount of growth and potential that's there as well. Because I know it's important, and we've said this already a couple of times, service, service, service. Service is so important to you guys, and yeah. being the company that you are, you constantly showcase how, that, how much that means to you, and I'm sure that your partners believe in that as well. Absolutely, Tony. It is actually part of the partnership. I mean, we cannot sell a solution, X million amount of dollars to the partner. And I said earlier, the customer is running the equipment for 24 hours, seven days a week. So you can imagine if a machine or something in the, in the system breaks down, we cannot really wait till we have the parts over from Europe. So we have to have the parts locally. With that being said, 
and I talk about this all the time, guys, for people who keep up with MTD in North America, you guys know this as well. When that spindle is broken, we're losing money, right? And the fact that yeah. you said within 24 hours we can get you a new spindle with over a million dollars in inventory parts from 80 to 85% of what can break down the machine, you are keeping people running and that helps us all make money. Yeah, this part of our commitment to the US market, me being German, I know exactly that in the United States, a lot of customers are sometimes a little bit skeptical about European companies. They always think, yeah, when the business is going good in the United States, they all come over, they wanna have a little bit, a, a, piece of the pie, so speak, and when the business go, is going down a little bit, these companies disappear. And with our parts warehouse, with the fact that we are here since 1955, I think we show a very clear commitment to the U.S. market. I could not agree more, Udo, and you Thank nailed you. it with that 1955 statement. When you talk about somebody just getting in while the getting's good kind of a thing, 1955 started in the 1800s it's 2020 plus 21 now right yeah. so you guys have obviously shown we're here for the long haul we're here for the journey we're here for you and your success what do you think Starag as a group how do you set yourselves apart in this industry where do you think you can really bring value to that audience out here that's watching this yeah. right now what message would you convey to that guys Give Starg a look. These machines can really help you here and here and here kind of a thing. Yeah, that's very simple to answer, Tony. I just repeat our slogan, engineering precisely what you value. So that is basically what we are doing. Again, I come back to the solution provider and that really sets us apart. I mean, no part is too difficult to us. No question from the customer is too difficult for us. I say usually if a customer has a part where a lot of other machine tool builders say, mm, I cannot touch it, then Starak comes in and basically say, oh, that's it, okay, let us working on it. Well, it sounds to me like people should stop beating around the bush and come straight to Starak, and, <laughs> and then they have the solution they need. Yeah, that is absolutely <laughs> correct, that's absolutely correct. So, for the people watching, I'm sure there's some curiosity that's you know, been ignited from this conversation. If someone wanted to learn a little bit more about you guys, where can they find you as far as website, social media, any of that kind of information so they can look you up, send an email, start a conversation? Yeah, so that's very easy. We have our own YouTube channel. So basically, if you type in Sterak on YouTube, you find our own channel. Certainly LinkedIn, everybody can contact me, absolutely no problem, or simply info at Sterak. Well, you are famous on LinkedIn, so I highly recommend you guys giving Udo a, a shout. Yeah. And uh, Udo, I really appreciate you being here and sharing your story and Starag's story with MTD. And, thank you, Tony. Uh, I know time is very valuable, so thank you for sharing your time with us. Thank you, Tony.